Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am joined today by two guests, by Xander and Penelope, and also by their cat, Zoomer. And we are going to be writing stories on typewriters today. Let's get to it. <laughs> I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jetpack and some fuel, because we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride with your good friends at your side. Imagination is your guide, because it's Dr. Sparks, science story typewriting time. That a cat and a bird could not be the best of friends. The end. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Sparks, and I'm joined today by Penelope and by Xander, two friends who are going to help me create some stories on my typewriter today. Hey, guys, you want to wave? <laughs> I'm glad you're here. And sometimes the cat Zoomer is there as well. He makes an appearance in this story. We're actually right in the middle of writing a story right now. And guys, the story is done, but it still needs a title. So do you think, can I read the story back to you, Xander? And you can tell me what you think the title should be and we'll add it to the top. Penelope, do you think you can help pick a title too? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Zoomer the cat did not, as a rule, like birds. And Zoomer definitely did not like hummingbirds. They were like a cross between mice and birds. Tasty, but not friend material. All that changed when Xander, when, excuse me, when Zoomer got stuck in the tall tree outside. Help, purred, Zo purred Zoomer. Help, help. <laughs> it's my best guess at a cross between a meow and a help. <laughs> but nobody could hear her. Then there came the buzzing of wings. Are you stuck? Said the hummingbird. I am, said Zoomer. Can you help me? I will help you only if you don't eat me, said the hummingbird. Okay, said the cat. And the hummingbird showed Zoomer the way down back to the ground. And in no time at all, they were safe. The two of them spent the rest of the afternoon frolicking through the front yard, a word which we, mean, which we learn means to skip around and dance around with butterflies through your hair. They frolicked through the front yard, and afterwards, they decided there was no reason that a cat and a bird could not be the best of friends. The end. And what's that story called, do you think? The Hummingbird and Zoomer. <laughs> the Hummingbird and Zoomer? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that is a great title for that story. And this whole time, Cecilia has been toiling away to make an illustration to go along with this story as well. And look at this work of art she has made. <laughs> we can see the hummingbird flapping its wings frantically in the air, the cat holding on for dear life to the tree. There's so much motion even in this still image. The hummingbird and Zoomer. The hummingbird. Zoomer's behind Xander. What's that? That's one of our cats. <laughs> oh yes, back there. <laughs> the hummingbird and Zoomer. Now, what we do next, guys, is I am actually going to mail this story to you. So I've got an envelope with a stamp here and I'm going to very carefully fold your story up into thirds. And then I'll stuff it into the envelope. Lick the envelope. And then once it's nice and sealed, put it into our mailbox. And then, mail truck is going to frolic all the way to you and deliver your letter. <laughs> now, each week when we write these stories, we, take, we pick a word of the week. And this week's word is not frolic, as you might expect. No, we picked a different word for the week that we're hopeful that in our next story we might be able to incorporate. The word of the week, week this week is gullible. Have you guys ever heard that word before, Penelope or Xander? 
What does that word mean? Do you know? Zoomers on the couch. <laughs> he certainly is. Do you know what the word gullible means? <laughs> Have you ever heard that word before? Let me give you a hint. If I said the moon is right outside your door right now and you believed me without looking outside your door to make sure the moon was actually there, you'd be gullible. Gullible is whenever somebody takes your word for something, believes you about something really crazy without any evidence or any reason to believe you. So you might say to me, hey, gullible's written on the ceiling. And if I went, whoa, oh, I would be gullible. Now, sometimes gullible is written on the ceiling as in right now, <laughs> but normally that's not the case. <laughs> so like, if you thought it was there and it was there? Um, so like, if, if you told me that it was there, but it wasn't. I would be gullible if I believed you. Does that make sense? Zoomer's here. <laughs> Hello, Zoomer. Now, if you're watching at home, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, on the Make channel, if you'd like to leave a comment that either uses the word gullible in a sentence or a sentence that I would have to be gullible to believe, I'll respond to it and it'll be pretty fun. So guys, if you find the opportunity to use the word gullible to maybe say, um, you know, when that pirate, when we told that pirate that if he let us go, we would grant him a wish, he was pretty gullible. <laughs> if that penguin believed that whenever we told him that the ocean didn't have a single seal in it, he was pretty gullible. If you can find a way to incorporate that into your next story, that'd be pretty cool, but it doesn't have to happen. Like if someone told you something, but, it, but that wasn't actually true. I would be gullible if I believed it, yeah. Will you tell me something I'd have to be gullible to believe? Can you tell me something that really is not just not true, but really would be crazy if it was true? He says grouse. What was that? <laughs> Pizza is gross. Pizza is gross? Now, if I believed you, if I never ate pizza again because you told me that, I would be gullible. <laughs> All right. But, 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 but just to clarify though, is pizza gross? It's not, right? It, it's good. No, it's good. Okay, thank goodness. I was really worried that something had changed since the last time I had pizza. All right, let's write another story together, guys. What would you like your next story to be about? We can make it about Zoomer again, about pizza perhaps. The cat and the dragon. The cat and the dragon? I love this. Okay. Um, the is the, the, the cats the cat and the dragon? The cat has. So we're going to include all our cats. How many cats do you have? Four. Four cats? <laughs> the cats and the dragon. Okay, I'm on board. Now, do you think, do you think the dragon owns the cats? In my mind, dragons keep cats as pets. They seem like they kind of go hand in hand. You know, one is like a mouser, cats eat mice, you know, and like dragons like eat knights, which kind of rhymes with mice. And, you know, kind of like, you know, oh, he's a real, he's a real knight knight, sir. No, no, the cat, the cat's pet is the dragon. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm down with that. Okay, so we got four cats. They live in this house and they have as their pet, a dragon. And so, now is the dragon, is the dragon as small as cats are to us? Is it a really tiny dragon? Or is it just as big as a normal dragon is? Which is like- It's just as big as a normal dragon. Mm -hmm. And how big is a normal dragon? Is it as big as, how big is it? Big. That big? Whoa, both your arms together? Jeez, guys, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Four cats lived in a house. The four cats lived in a house that was always on the verge, oops, that's not how you spell verge, the verge of catching on fire. 
Iron? The sniper editor can type in red. <laughs> because no, they had as their pet a dragon who was just as big as two kids with their arms fully outstretched. This is a great story. Right now, we've got a really cool character and he's in a really cool place. We've got these four cats and they have a pet dragon. Something has to happen now. We need to have some sort of conflict. It doesn't have to be bad, but something has to change, I think, for the middle of our story now. What happens they to our dragon? All the cats ride on the dragon, but the dragon drops the cats. Mm -hmm. um, and the cats fall um, into the ocean. Oh but my goodness! <laughs> That's, okay, one day, uh, the cats were out for a leisurely dragon ride. <laughs> when suddenly, there was a burst, burst of wind and they fell off the back of their oversized course, we know that cats always land. How do they always land? On their on feet. feet. On their feet, yes. But that doesn't do you much good when you land on the ocean, does it? <laughs> of course, we know that cats always land on their feet. But that didn't do them very much good because they fell in the ocean. <laughs> okay. Um, and so what I'm picturing here, well, what do you think happens next? Well, actually, let's look at what Cecilia's drawing and see if we can check in on what she thinks about this story so far. Look at that dragon. Oh my gosh. I don't see it. Oh. Uh -huh. So here's the dragon and I'm having the four cats uh, on his back and maybe I'll put uh, ocean right here. So it's before anything bad happens. That seems pretty great. I love that dragon. Look at his face. <laughs> so guys, what do you think happens next? That could also be the end of our story too. Do you think the dragon rescues them from the surf? No, a whale, a whale, um, let's Let's the cats ride on them to the surface. Um, and, and then the dragon finds, that, finds the cats on the surface and flies them back home. I love that. Can I add just one more thing to this story? I think it would be really funny if they then took the whale as a pet too. So they have a dragon as a pet, but then at the end of the story, they also have a whale for a pet too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> catch them if if the way if and there's a big gust of wind again okay yeah the whale the whale will always be there to help them if there's another gust of wind that makes sense um okay um the cats before the cats could get too wet out of the ocean arose a whale who let the cats ride on his back until the dragon could rescue them. Afterwards, the cats got a second pet, the whale that had saved them. And now their house was pretty 
cramped, but it was also the coolest place to be. I feel like that's the end of the story. Is that a good place to stop it, do you think? No, you don't want to end it there? No. What do you think happens next? Um, then the whale takes them for a ride, but something bites it on the belly and the cats fall over and they, and they um, fall into the deep sea and they go all the way down and then the, and then an octopus catches them and, <laughs> and the octopus is their pet and <laughs> and uh, and they have to have a pool a humongous pool in their backyard <laughs> <laughs> and the octopus saves the whale Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm on board for this. All right, uh, now their house was pretty cramped, but it was also the coolest place to be. The very next day, they took a ride on the whale, but the whale, oops, uh, the whale was attacked and Pulled. Oh, geez. Pulled to the watery depths of the ocean. Is it an octopus or a squid? An octopus. An octopus or a, okay. Uh, but a friendly octopus. Octopus saved the whale and brought him back to the shore. The cats made the octopus their pet too. And now when the cats Old people, where, uh, what? All the pets they had were, the people thought that the cats must think they were very, what word am I gonna use? Do you guys know? What word? It, lucky. It, what was it? Lucky. Lucky? <laughs> yes, well, I would think they were so lucky too. But honestly, if I told you that I had as my pets a whale, a dragon, and an octopus, would you believe me? No. You would if you were. Bellable! Bellable! <laughs> But I really like Lucky as well. <laughs> the, uh, the people thought the cats must think they were very uh, gullible. <laughs> and <laughs> the cats just thought they were lucky. And that right there is a great story. <laughs> oh, man. OK, let's look at what Cecilia drew. Let's check in. <laughs> Look at the whale! <laughs> There's the dragon. I like yeah, that I dragon. Me too. And the four little cats. <laughs> My mom's the one that's not <laughs> Happiest one in the universe. I love that little whale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The one who's sitting rightly draggy on the 
on the dragon. <laughs> okay, so our story's done, but it needs a title now. So can I read you guys the whole story and then you tell me what the title should be and we'll add it to the top? All right, here we go. The four cats lived in a house that was always on the verge of catching on fire because they had as their pet a dragon who was just as big as two kids with their arms outstretched. <laughs> One day, the cats were out for a leisurely dragon ride when suddenly there was a burst of wind and they fell off the back of their oversized pet. I just do everything four times because there are four cats. <laughs> of course, we know that cats always land on their feet, but that doesn't do a whole lot of good when you're landing on the ocean, which is where the cats landed. But thankfully, before the cats got too wet, a whale rose up out of the watery depths and picked them up and carried them back to the land where the dragon carried them safely home. Now the cats got a second pet and their pet was the whale that had saved them. The next day, they went for a whale ride. But what happened? Suddenly, the whale was attacked and pulled down into the watery depths. He would have been lost in the Mariana Trench, except that a friendly dragon was able to free the whale. And the whale rose back up and carried the kittens back to shore. And that day, once again... Oh, did I say squid? No, you said dragon. Oh, I said dragon. A friendly octopus, I wrote down. I'm pretending I got away from what I'd written. A friendly octopus saved the whale and brought him back to the shore. And the cats made the octopus their pet as well. And now when the cats told people what all the pets they had were, the people thought the cats were tricking them. That the cats thought the people were gullible. <laughs> but of course the cats were doing nothing of the sort. They were just telling them how lucky they were. The end. What do you think that story's called? Good. The, cat, the story's called Good? The dragon and the cats and more. The dragon and the cats and more. <laughs> I love that. Okay, perfect. Dragon, cats, and more. <clears throat> and I wonder when the books are going to end. The dragon and the cats and more. <laughs> That is wonderful. <laughs> and I will mail this story to you as well. So now I'll go ahead and take your envelope and I'm gonna just use the same envelope again. Carefully divide your story into thirds so it fits into the envelope. Thank the Count for being such a good stamp. Thanks Count. Oh, you betcha. Oh, oh, oh. Lick it again. Never look at an envelope too many times. That makes it happy that we get more books. <laughs> Wonderful. America. <laughs> oh, look, it looks as though we uh, got some. <laughs> Mail track carries it so far away. I want to make one of those. Like, yeah. Okay. So now, guys. Every week we put out a call for people to write a story with a special prompt. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube or Facebook, this prompt is for you as well. Although Penelope or Xander, if you guys would like to write a story with this prompt, I would love it as well. So last week's prompt was write a story about a fish named Doug who can only live in cups of hot chocolate. Evelyn submitted this story. And let me tell you right now, it is awesome. Once there was a fish, and he only survived in hot chocolate. One day, he wanted to figure out if he could live in something else other than hot chocolate. He yelled out to get out. Someone fished him out, and he tried saying, Can I want to be put in water. And the person who got him was like, no, you may not, and I'm going to eat you. So the fish got eaten, but the guy drank the water. And finally, the fish had his dream, but he did not survive. The end. <laughs> I love this story so much. It really takes a turn. You really think that fish is going to survive, and he does not. Did you guys like Evelyn's story? It's really 
So if you guys would like to write a story or if any of the people that are watching at home would like to watch a story, this week's prompt is write a story about a bird who can only make the sad trombone sound. <laughs> Do you guys know that sound? Have you heard that before? A lot of times. Yeah, when do you use that sound? When something bad happens. Yeah. So what would it mean if you had, I'm picturing a little yellow bird, although it doesn't say. I'm picturing like a little chickadee and he's flying around and he lands on your finger, you know, and he's looking up at you. But instead of saying chirp, 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 he says. <laughs> so that's the prompt for next week. So please, if you find it in your hearts, if you'd like to write a story, please submit a story to Dr. Sparks and we would love to uh, do that. Now, there's been a bunch of people that have chimed in and I've been a very bad host, not looking at the comments that people have left, but I got really into that story because it was pretty great with the whales and the octopus and the four cats and the dragon. But um, I would just like to point out that Natalie said the, peng the penguin told the walrus there was a diamond on his head and the walrus believed him. That walrus would have to be pretty gullible to believe that a diamond was on his head, wouldn't it? I would hope that if I had a diamond on my head, I would know. I mean, hopefully it'd be part of a crown or some sort of other, uh, you know, headwear situation, tiara maybe. Um, but that would indeed be an example. So great job, Natalie. That was wonderful. Um, it looks like somebody's sending us a million dollars to keep doing the show. So thank you, Rachel. That's great. <laughs> and uh, Alan says hi. And John says, hey, hey. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in so much. <laughs> okay, so now I would just like to once again thank our story writers today. This is the end of our stories for today, but Penelope, Xander, I would just like to say, you guys made some awesome stories today. You made Zoomer seem like the greatest cat in the world. You guys have such imagination, such creativity. I'm so happy that we can bring it to life and make some awesome stories today. I am Dr. Sparks. You guys are awesome, Xander and Penelope. We were joined today by Cecilia Hillway, who did the incredible artwork. Look at that dragon. It was green. I had no idea until this moment the dragon was green. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Now, just to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. The show is over, but I'd like to thank very quickly Family Maker Camp for hosting us today. Maker Camp is an incredible sprawling event. This whole summer, they're going to be doing all sorts of programming. And if you go to makercamp.com slash events, you can find out about further typewriter stories events, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that's happening this week, next week, and on the future, uh, going on forwards. This weekend, there's a very special event. There's virtually Maker Fair happening this Saturday. It's a 24 hour event. A lot of different people are going to be showing off a lot of cool projects. So please make sure that you tune in. If you like these typewriter stories, you are welcome to tune in every week at four o'clock on Mondays. That's when we do our typewriter stories. And if you'd like to book your own private show, if you go to drsparkshow.com, you can book a, a show for your classroom uh, or any other group of people that you'd like to do some typewriter stories like this live with the illustrations. I'm Dr. Sparks. And remember, uh, our prompt this week, please write a story about a bird who can only make the sad trombone sound. With that, guys, keep those typewriter fingers limber and those typewriters oiled. I will see you next week. <laughs>